And I have took two different residencies and combined them and did the training for both and did the board certifications for both so that I can see adults and children. Yeah, Lloyd always says, med peds, they're the smartest. So I don't know if we're <laughs> the smartest or the craziest. <laughs> Hey, Hillary. Hello. How are you? Great. How good. Are you? I'm good. Thanks for being here with us today. My pleasure. I wanted to introduce you. You are Dr. Hillary Hunt. You are almost a year now new to ZipMed, yeah. and I would love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm internal medicine and pediatric certified, but I did take the long route to get to being a doctor. I actually graduated with an art degree and a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts with an emphasis in graphic design, and I worked for about a year before medicine had really just called me back. I, I was interested in it before, kind of got out of it, and, and, and even though it was the long route, it was a good good way to go so that I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. But and as a non-traditional student, I think I've also tend to have a little bit of a non-traditional mindset. Mm -hmm. And I've always appreciated a more um, holistic and bigger view of medicine. And yeah. whether that is why I went into art or whether art influenced me to feel that way, I don't know if they're related, but um, that's how I ended up in medicine. And then internal medicine and pediatrics, um, means that I've took two different residencies and combined them and did the training for both and did the board certifications for both so that I can see adults and children. Yeah, Lloyd always says, med peds, they're the smartest. So <laughs> I don't know if we're the smartest or the craziest. <laughs> <laughs> we're lucky to have you. Well, thank um, you. I love it. And actually today, um, several things just came to mind as you were talking about your past. But, you know, Lloyd is another one that took the long way to get back to medicine. Right. And that's one of the ways that we're different at Zop. I think mm -hmm. um, your, your viewpoint on illness and prevention of disease is something that I want to talk about today. But I also really want to use this time as a focus to introduce some integrative behavioral health visits that we are going to offer at ZipMed under uh, your supervision and uh, your guidance. And so your mom of two kids, um, you take care of pediatric patients, you uh, take care of adults, you know that we have a mental health crisis uh, in the United States right now. And can you talk me through kind of how someone, a mom and dad, can navigate a child who needs a push in, in some direction? That's a great question. And I think one that probably the majority of parents are trying to figure out right now. We really live in a world that's somewhat removed from like reality as we knew it for hundreds of years. And so we live in, in a very um, artificial environment with artificial food and artificial light artificial realities. I mean, video games, TV, we don't have the same social interaction. And all of these things influence our health. Interestingly, and um, a topic you and I love to discuss, all of those influence our microbiome specifically. Even social isolation is a stressor that can influence our microbiome. So um, when we look at our health, Hippocrates, hundreds of years ago, said all disease starts in the gut. Mm -hmm. And then we chose to ignore it for millennia mm -hmm. until more recently when we have seen that um, so many of our medical conditions begin with dysregulation of all of the, the microbiome, the, the good and bad bugs, if you will, that live in our gut. And um, I've heard it said that all health starts in the gut as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, trying to nourish the microbiome as a parent, I have had a very strong uh, desire to nourish that the best that I can from mm -hmm. the child, my time my children were born. Mm -hmm. And it's not always easy, whether it's the food choices I'm trying to make for them or their sleep routines mm -hmm. or um, exercise, if they've had if they must have antibiotics and avoiding antibiotics or other disruptors when I can. I always try to keep the microbiome as a focus. Yeah. So the microbiome, as you and I have talked about much 
previous to this is so fascinating because we weren't taught in yeah. conventional training anything about the gut. And the gut is made of 10 to 1 <laughs> trillions of cells, um, more so than the human body itself. And, and those um, bugs, if when they're happy, we're happy and healthy. And when they're unhappy or in an unhappy balance, they are um, they play havoc on our health. And we may we may delve into this. We may make this a part two and and kind of do a deep dive in the microbiome and and how that plays a role in overall health, but especially mental health, um, and which is kind of. W- the, the the visit that I want to uh, talk about with you. So, so an integrative behavioral health visit. Why do why would some parent need this for their child? Why would why would a parent or why should a parent come to you to seek out um, answers? I, I think that parents who are looking for something other than the traditional um, medical approach, which has been primarily pharmacology and medications. Um, if, if parents are looking for more of a root cause, if they want to know what's behind it, whether that's genetic or a nutrient deficiency mm-hmm. or another factor that is influencing um, a child's mental health, not all behavior issues are just behavior. Mm-hmm. We've seen studies um, where ADHD um, symptoms have been affected by food dyes. I'm, I'm sure many people are familiar with that. Mm-hmm. So um, I've even personally seen patients come in with horrendous ADHD symptoms over the top, and that child wasn't sleeping, and it had become a snowball kind of a situation. And so they didn't really have ADHD, but they behaved like it mm-hmm. because they weren't getting sleep. Sure. And so uh, a parent who wants to look for potentially more underlying causes. Um, Is there something I can do prior to or before pharmaceuticals? Or is there, you know, we do need medication at this point. Um, Is there a route that's safer or more effective than another, you know, in in terms of genetics? For parents who are looking for that deeper dive, that that deeper look that most um, physicians in traditional care really aren't afforded the time. Correct. So I, I wouldn't want to suggest that they wouldn't like to take the deep dive, right. but it's not reasonable in most settings. Right, right. So if they schedule an appointment with you, talk me through maybe, um, you know, y- you would want adequate time to talk with the parent and the child together or separately. Most of these scenarios would at least start together. Mm-hmm. Um Younger kids may, their input, very young children is going to be, um, in terms of verbally explaining to me, may be low, but but the behavior, watching the behavior and the interaction, Mm -hmm. and of course, getting an exam is important. Um, Sometimes with adolescents or older children, having some time with them alone can be helpful or or with the parent alone to be able for each to speak freely. Mm -hmm. Um, So it would be tailored somewhat to the age and the the problem that, mm-hmm. that we're concerned with. You know, is this depression and is it um, an adolescent who just really doesn't want to speak freely in front of a parent and, and um, you know, would discuss with that parent about having some time alone? Or is it a six-year-old, you yeah. know, who, who we need the primary, the history from the parent? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I should probably say we're we're not counselors. Um, Correct. We, we refer out for mm-hmm. behavioral counseling. We're not psychiatry, but we do mm-hmm. have some tools that go beyond pharmacology. So, for a parent who may be interested in this, let's let's review the the three things that might be different from a pediatric appointment that they would get with you at ZoomMed uh, coming in for this integrative behavioral visit. So, I guess we would start with um, the, the assessment of the microbiome. Yes. Yeah. L- um, that's yeah. very important. Yeah. And that's a stool test. Honestly, every micro, every child, every human's microbiome is as individual as our fingerprints. And so with the genetic testing, the stool testing that we have now, we can understand the diversity of the gut. Not only is there bad bacteria present, is there good bacteria present, but the 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 range of those and how mm-hmm. they may play off each other and which key bacteria are missing that positively help us make 
our serotonin, our happy hormone. I think it's what, 90% of our serotonin? 90% is of made. our serotonin is made in our gut. Yeah. And it's yeah. not made by our enzymes. It's made by gut enzymes. Right. So those gut bacteria and, enzymes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bacteria actually contributes to our hormones. Yes. Which is just a little bit mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling, but it's that gut-brain connection mm-hmm. that is exploding in the literature these days. And 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 it actually makes sense. I, I, sometimes we get butterflies. Right. Um, there's a there's a vagus nerve response when we're nervous, mm-hmm. and right. what may be going on in the in the gut. If you mm-hmm. think about it, it sort of makes. Um, some logical sense. Um, well, it's that gut feeling. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's been around forever. <laughs> um, so the the gut is a is a big picture. That and then you mentioned nutrient deficiencies. Our diet in America is sad. It's, the standard American diet is truly sad. Yeah, and it is so deficient. Um, I believe it is two thirds of children don't get a vegetable, vegetable. <laughs> every day, mm-hmm. um, and. I do remember in medical school sitting through biochemistry and just being utterly astounded that any of us could survive on what we eat. Yeah. And that all the nutrients that we need and and the processed diets that we have, um, that was definitely mind-boggling to me that we would be able to survive. And we're definitely not thriving. Yeah, yeah. So nutrient deficiencies are... Uh, are significant and there there is research behind them yeah so lab work is a part Mm -hmm. of your assessment in helping a child achieve some benchmark or optimization of their current situation and i guess the the third piece of this is is genetics Mm -hmm. and that's where my expertise comes in to help Mm -hmm. some and and that is if we have a child who it's time to be medicated Mm -hmm. um from from your direction, we have the science to test for both pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic genes, and and those are words that that basically mean what the body does to the drug and what the ju- drug does to the body. But we can we can predict um, how the child may respond to a certain medicine based upon the type of gene that they have. Do they have the right receptor? Do they have the right transporter genes in place to Mm. respond? Or is their liver going to be less likely to process or metabolize that drug in a safe way? And so we can avoid a lot of side effects, um, because the typical approach is trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. And miserable trial and error. Yeah. I mean, for an SSRI, you usually say it can take four up to eight weeks for mm-hmm. full effect. So I want you to wait eight weeks mm-hmm. and we'll see if it's working. And if not, we'll try a new one and wait eight weeks. I mean, that's miserable for someone who's looking for relief. It's miserable and, for the child, but it's miserable for the parents as correct. well. Correct. Yeah. And then ADHD meds okay. as, as well, you know. There's a plethora. There's more than one type, and yes. again, you're trying. You're yeah. it, by the time a, a parent's looking for medication, a lot of times school is difficult and home life is difficult, and and it's expensive to sure. this medication. It didn't work. Two weeks later, we're trying a new one. Sure, you know sure. that's hard. Sure. Well, we're lucky to have you. If if a parent wants to come for an integrative behavioral health visit, um, how do they reach you? Well, they can call us at yeah. ZipMed, 901-701-7010. That's right. And um, I believe, can they do this online as well now? They can do this online as well. Go to our website, www.zipmed.com, and you can schedule a visit with Dr. Hunt through, um, the option would be for a behavioral or an integrative behavioral right. health visit. Yes, awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you.